What's up, everyone? It's Jaronism again, back with another video, short one for you. And first thing I want to say, thanks to everyone for spreading the truth out there. Uh, just keep doing it. Don't let the science preachers change your mind. Uh, use your brain and your eyes and decide for yourselves. Uh, so I did want to tell NASA and SpaceX and ESA that it's time to give us our $1 trillion back. And I think Alex Jones sums it up best, my feelings about NASA. I mean, it's just like scum, Nazi filth, trash, garbage, maggots. We so first things first is I get a lot of questions about GPS. What about GPS? How does GPS work if we're not on a globe? And I need to explain to them that GPS means global positioning system. It does not mean reality positioning system. It means your global positioning system. Where are you if you were on a globe? So that's how it works. If it were a reality positioning system, it would say flat. You're on the flat earth. So the second thing is, again, I always want to bring this up because I think it's one of the best evidences for you to think about. Water will always find its flatness. It is always flat. It can't be curved. It can't have a hump in it. Uh, scientists and, and these science preachers will tell you that it can because of gravity. But all you need to think about is that from California to Hawaii is almost 2,500 miles. And if you believe in that, which I do, then you must believe that there is a 770 mile high hump of water if you believe in the globe. And if you believe in that, then you believe in make believe and pretend. And I think you should start believing in reality. Joseph Jastrow uh, in 1935 said, create a belief in the theory and the facts will create themselves. So if you think about that, you can start to see the deception that they're playing on us. Uh, take a look at gravity and just think to yourself that all it is is a construction of mathematical equations that don't jive with reality. And there's a lot of these equations. They're all over the place and they don't make any sense. Another example of no sense making science is relativity and tell me how smart you have to be to get this one the theory of relativity says in its equation form that r to the little pw minus half of r to the g pw plus lambda times g to the pw equals of course 8 times pi to the g n to the t pw that makes sense doesn't it Right. <laughs> Who is this really? <laughs> What's going on? How come you want me to do all these weird things? The person who wants you to do all these weird things is people like Neil Tyson DeGrasse, who's quoted here as saying, The good thing about science is that it's true whether or not you believe in it. So that's fantastic advice, Neil. Thanks very much. I don't believe in it, so if you want to say it's true, that's up to you. Basically, guys, they have every base covered. They have done the work they need to do to make sure that all their math works, and the only tool we have to combat them is our brain and our eyes. So I suggest you try it out. Next, we've got uh, 1984. If you have never read it, if you were like me, which was supposed to read it in high school, and I think I probably got an A on whatever test I was supposed to take, but I never actually read the book until just this week. And if you read it, I think you'll be very, very shocked at some of the info that you'll get out of it. The book was written by George Orwell. It was written in the late 40s. Uh, he died about a year or two after he wrote it and you'll probably see why here in a second. I took about eight or ten different parts of the book to read to you right now just so you can get an idea of why it's important for you to read it. Uh, don't watch the movies. The movies are different. They take out the parts that I'm going to tell you about. Uh, the slogan of the Big Brother or the political party, the party in the book, is war is peace, freedom is slavery, ignorance is strength. So here's some quotes from the book. It isn't very important about the top hats, said Winston patiently. The point is, these capitalists, they and a few lawyers and priests and so forth who lived on them, were the lords of the earth. Everything existed for their benefit. 
you, the ordinary people, the workers, were, the, were their slaves. They could do what you, they liked with you. They could ship you off to Canada like cattle. They could sleep with your daughters if they chose. The heresy of heresies was common sense, and what was terrifying was not that they would kill you for thinking otherwise, but that they might be right. For, after all, how do we know that two plus two make four, or that the force of gravity works, or that the past is unchangeable? If both the past and the external world exist only in the mind, and if the mind itself is controllable, what then? By making him suffer, obedience is not enough. Unless he is suffering, how can you be sure that he is obeying your will and not his own? Power is in inflicting pain and humiliation. Power is in tearing human minds to pieces and putting them together again in new shapes of your own choosing. Do you begin to see, then, what kind of world we are creating? It is the exact opposite of the stupid hedonistic utopias that the old reformers imagined. A world of fear and treachery and torment, a world of trampling and being trampled upon, a world which will not grow less but more merciless as it refines itself. Progress in our world will be progress towards more pain. Alone, free, the human being is always defeated. It must be so, because every human being is doomed to die, which is the greatest of all failures. But if he can make complete, utter submission, if he can escape from his identity, if he can merge himself into the party, so that he is the party, then he is all-powerful and immortal. The second thing for you to realize is that power is power over human beings, over the body, but above all over the mind. Power over matter, external reality, as you would call it, is not important. Already our control over, mat over matter is absolute. The next few portions are in the book, A Conversation, so I'll try and change my voice a little bit so you can follow along, but very interesting and telling information here. But how can you control matter, he burst out. You don't even control the climate or the law of gravity, and there is disease, pain, and death. O'Brien silenced him with a movement of his hand. We control matter because we control the mind. Reality is inside the skull. You will learn by degrees, Winston. There is nothing that we could not do. Invisibility, levitation, anything. I could float off this floor like a soap bubble, soap bubble if I wish to. I do not wish to because the party does not wish to. You must get rid of those 19th century ideas about the laws of nature. We make the laws of nature. But you do not. You're not even masters of this planet. What about Eurasia and East Asia? You have not conquered them yet. Unimportant. We shall conquer them when it suits us. And if we did not, what difference would it make? We can shut them out by existence. Oceana is the world. But the world itself is only a speck of dust, and man is tiny, helpless. How long has he been in existence? For millions of years, the earth was uninhabited. Nonsense. The earth is as old as we are. No older. How could it be any older? Nothing exists except through human consciousness. But the rocks are full of bones of extinct animals, mammoths and mastodons and enormous reptiles which lived here long before man was ever even heard of. Have you seen those bones, Winston? Of course not. Nineteenth century biologists invented them. Before man, there was nothing. After man, if he could come to an end, there would be nothing. Outside of man's existence, there is nothing. But the whole universe is outside of us. Look at the stars. Some of them are a million light years away. They are out of reach forever. What are the stars, said O'Brien indifferently? They are bits of fire a few kilometers away. We could reach them if we wanted to, or we could blot them out. The earth is the center of the universe. The sun and the stars go around it. For certain purposes, of course, that is not true. When we navigate the ocean or when we predict an eclipse, we often find it convenient to assume that the earth goes round the sun, and that the stars are millions upon millions of kilometers away. But what of it? Do you suppose it is beyond us to produce a dual system of astronomy? The stars can be near or distant, according as we need them. Do you suppose our mathematicians are unequal to that? Have you forgotten doublethink? The old civilizations claim that they were founded on love or justice. Ours is founded upon hatred. In our world, there will be no emotions except fear, rage, triumph, and self-abasement. Everything else we shall destroy. Everything. Already we are breaking down the habits of thought, which have survived from before the revolution. We have cut the links between child and parent, and between man and man, and between man and woman. No one dares trust a wife or a child or a friend any longer. But in the future, there will be no wives and no friends. Children will be taken from their mothers at birth, as one takes eggs from a hen. 
The earthly paradise had been discredited at exactly the moment when it became realizable. Every new political theory, by whatever name it's called itself, led back to the hierarchy and regimentation, and in the general hardening of outlook that set in round about 1930, practices which had been long abandoned, in some cases for hundreds of years, imprisonment without trial, the use of war prisoners as slaves, public executions, torture to exact extract confessions, the use of hostages and the deportation of whole populations, not only become common again, but were tolerated and even defended by people who considered themselves enlightened and progressive. And remember that this is forever. The face will always be there to be stamped on. The heretic, the enemy of society, will always be there so that he can be defeated and humiliated over and over again. Everything that you have undergone since you have been in our hands, all of this will continue, and worse. The espionage, the betrayals, the arrests, the tortures, the executions, the disappearances will never cease. It will be a world of terror as much as a world of triumph. The more the party is powerful, the less it will be tolerant. The weaker the opposition, the tighter the depotism. Those are very few of the amazing quotes in this book. I recommend you read it today tomorrow, this week. Uh, you can go online and just search for it. It is in the public domain, so Project Gutenberg and other places like that. Uh, you can get the free ebook. Check it out. I think that George Orwell knew a lot, knew more than a lot of people at that time, and uh, he paid for it with his life. He only lived to be 47 years old. He also wrote Animal Farm, which is another great book. If you have never read that, I recommend it. Basically, the book teaches us that exactly what's going on now, exactly what the government's doing, exactly what the Masons are doing. Uh, they have taken us over from the inside, meaning they have gotten in our heads. They have taught us all in schools exactly the world that they want us to live in, uh, a world with a million planets and a million stars, and we were created from stardust, and we will all live and die, and our, our existence is unimportant, and if you're following along with my channel and others like it, you'll realize now that that is the biggest lie in the history of the world.